Hello, my name is Michael Beck. I'm the owner of Southern Indiana Sawmill. I'm making this video today to talk about the issue of grain direction and properly sawing boards. One of the questions that often comes up, especially among woodworkers, is how wood is sawn and the characteristics that that's going to have and the usefulness of different projects. Today, I'm going to cover four of the primary methods of sawing. The first is that of flat, or what we call plain sawing. The second is going to be quarter sawing. The third method is going to be called rift sawing. And the fourth and final method that I'm going to discuss is going to be slab sawing. Behind me today I have some maple logs that were sawn down and we're going to look at these logs and the way that we can cut them to get the most usefulness for that particular project that you might have in mind. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here I'm going to discuss the first type of sawing that is primarily used in the lumber industry today. This is a technique known as flat sawing, sometimes referred to as plain sawing. On this maple log that I have right here, uh, you're going to see that I've drawn some rings on here to make it easy to see on the camera. And I'm going to sort of draw on here and show you uh, how we would saw a log in the plain or flat sawing method. Typically what you're going to do with a log like this, and keep in mind this is a fairly irregularly shaped log. This would have been uh, somewhere at the base of the tree and so it has, uh, it's not perfectly spherical on the bottom, but it will still serve our purposes. When we go about sawing, the first thing that we're going to want to do is make what's called a cant. Uh, a cant is a fancy way of saying a square piece of wood. So that's the first step in taking something that is round and making it square. So first thing we're going to do is cut a piece off the top like this. And that's going to remove that top layer of bark and give us uh, good material, good lumber in this portion that we can use. Then we might rotate the log and cut a section off like this. Ideally, if this were a round log, we're really minimizing the loss of material and we can always use this uh, for burning in the firewood pile or something like that. But eventually what's going to happen is we're going to end up with something that is square, like this. Since we're discussing the flat sawn method, uh, the first thing that we would do is we would uh, probably start cutting boards about one inch thick typically or two inch thick depending on how we would do that and we would saw a couple off this way and keep in mind this is a relatively small log uh, my hand is about nine inches across here and you can see that's uh, that's about the width of this log um, ideally logs would be about 10 to 15 inches um, but the first thing we would do is we would saw these first two boards and then perhaps we would rotate the log around and we would saw off the bottom two boards like this at that point, uh, we're trying to avoid the, the, the pith of the, the log here. We might turn it upwards this way and then take off these couple, turn around again, and take off these couple. What you would be left with is this center board. Uh, that could still be useful for different purposes, but typically is going to be prone to checking. Um, that is the flat sawn method. Probably the reason that flat sawing or plain sawing uh, is so popular is, number one, it is the most economical purpose. Uh, for milling lumber. You're going to have very minimal scrap because all you're going to really lose is the out, these outer portions of the bark um, and so it's very minimal waste and uh, what is waste can be burned and reused. The second reason that this type of sawing is very popular is because of the many versatile uses that sawing a log in this manner can produce. The majority of your boards are going to be fairly wide. I mean, if this was a 15 inch uh, wide log, you're going to have several boards that you'll be able to select up to 15 inches wide. And if you do have a larger log, you can saw that down uh, to whatever width you like. You can take one off of this side, and then you could turn it and cut it and get one off of this side, and you continue rotating the log if uh, smaller boards was your preference. One of the third reasons that this is the most popular method to cut today is just because of basic efficiency. Uh, this is minimal labor, you get maximum yield, uh, it's the most efficient, and you really get a lot of usefulness out of this type of sawing method. So, with that said, let's move on to the quarter sawing method. Quarter sawing is very simple. I'm going to break it down as easy as I possibly can, and uh, there may be some that disagree. There are more than one ways uh, to quarter saw a log, uh, however this is probably uh, the easiest method to do it. Um, but, like I said earlier, it is more labor intensive than a flat or plain sawn board. The first thing that we're going to do with this log is we're going to cut it directly in half. 
So on the mill we're going to take this and we're going to saw this log directly in half. So we will have a top half and a bottom half. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take one of these halves and we're going to saw that in half. Now, as you can see, and as the name suggests, quarter sawing, we now are left with four distinct quarters of this log. Now, what is quarter sawing and what does that exactly mean? Well, a quarter sawn board is when the rings of the tree are as vertical as possible to the cut. And so if we have this quarter, what we're going to do is the first cut we're going to make is going to be in a direction like this. All of these rings are more or less straight on this log. So if we're going to cut it, how are we going to go about making sure that every cut that we get has this type of green orientation on it? Well, what we're going to have to do is take this log now and rotate it this way. And the next cut will be like this. Now these are going to be the two largest boards that you're going to get out of here. After this, every single board that you're going to get is going to get incrementally smaller until you're left with almost nothing. So the next cut will go like this, and the next cut will go like that. Now again, uh, on a little bit larger log, you could go further and further and reduce this down. Um, but you're going to get into a portion here that is more or less not usable anymore for quarter sun material because the grain is going too much like this. You see, on a quarter sawn material, we want the grain to be as straight as possible going this way. And so, on a small log like this, it's, uh, it's not really recommended to do a quarter sawn on. Um, usually when I quarter saw a log, uh, I want, I'm looking for at least a 12 to 15 inch diameter. Now that's not to say that you can't do it, or that you shouldn't do it. Um, but typically there's not a whole lot that woodworkers do with quarter sawn boards that are only one or two inches wide. So quarter sawing, uh, a very great method. Um, when you saw pieces of wood this way, um, what you're going to end up it with is very straight grain boards. Um, over time, they are going to be a lot less prone to warping and changing uh, with heat and humidity. Um, and some woods, such as oak, get this sort of radial flecking. Um, it really is just an amazing figure and really distinguishable from all other types of wood. So. That's the quarter sawing method. Uh, with that said, let's move on to the rift sawing method. Okay, so rift sawing. What is rift sawing and what does that exactly mean? Rift sawing uh, is sort of like quarter sawing. Well, what do I mean when I say sort of like? Well, let me explain this a little bit. There's different methods of rift sawing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this log straight down the middle. And again, as you can see, I've tried to draw the rings on here so that you can see the way that those are going uh, from the pith outward. Now the first form of rift sawing uh, typically uh, is extremely difficult on your typical mill and probably even, I would say, more labor intensive uh, than doing quarter sawing. Well, the reason for that is, is because this type of uh, rift sawing actually takes logs and saws them like this. Okay? And so basically it's this from the outside into the pith. And what you're trying to do actually is get square boards. So you get a square board maybe out of here and then you'd have to change the orientation and go like this. Now that is a type of rift sawing. Um, now that's a terminology that's used in some places but I'll show you uh, the more commonly accepted term for rift sawing and that is any time that the grain of the wood is at about 30 to 45 degrees um, to that board. So let me show you an example. When we begin to quarter saw something, we might take our first cut up here and our second cut, and those first two cuts are going to be pretty much dead on quarter sawn because those rings are going to be going more or less vertical on that board. Well, rift sawing is when we get a little bit further out into that log. So now when we get out into this region, these rings are going like this. Okay, and so those are no longer vertical with that board. So there's no reason to make this too fancy or too complicated. Quarter sawing means that those rings, when you look at the end of that board, are pretty much dead on vertical, um, up to about 25 to 30 degrees offset. Can still be considered quarter sawing. When we get into rift sawing, these rings become more of a 30 to 45 or 25 to 45. 
Uh, different places do have different standards for that. Uh, but our rifts on boards are going to be these ones that are more or less out here. The thing with a lot of uh, mill operators is if they're doing a, a board just for quarter sawing, um, this is tragic to say, but a lot of mill operators will say that this material in here is just simply not worth it to save. And so after they've exceeded the limits of the quarter sawn area, and they've gotten as much quarter sawn material as they can, they tend to throw that away. Um, however, there is still this material left in here that has uh, many purposes. Again, these are relatively small logs. Um, but if you had something larger, that would still be usable material somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, three to four inches wide. Um, which is definitely usable for a lot of projects. Um, and you can also find many rift sawn boards uh, in your typical flat or plain sawn method. Um, because of the orientation of the grain and the way that that's going to fall in your flat or plain sawn, uh, you tend to get a little bit of that. You can encounter rift sawn boards all over the place, um, although usually as a byproduct of a quarter sawing method or a flat or a plain sawn method. And that's about all there is to say about the rift sawing method. Um, but many good boards come out of that area uh, and we shouldn't be throwing that away. Very useful for many purposes. Uh, the fourth and final method that I'm going to discuss here is the slab sawing method. Hopefully you're not too confused at this point um, because this is going to be the simplest and easiest method. So <laughs> if your brain is scrambled at this point, uh, don't worry, it's going to become unscrambled very quickly. Here's how this works. Very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to take a log and we're going to get it up on our mill and all we're going to do is we're going to take off this first bit okay that's going to get rid of all the bark and everything and everything after that is simply going to be sawn straight across okay now as we're sawing this board straight across here's why we're doing this uh, this is a method that is going to get you extremely wide boards uh, imagine if you had a log that was 24 inches wide uh, and you wanted a 24 inch wide table like for your entryway table or something like that this type of method is going to get you this very wide board uh, and you'll be able to have the edges on there and I tell you it really is a cool looking piece of uh, wood when you're done with it uh, because you're going to get the character of the wood the different rings in there and the edge and sort of that rustic look that a lot of people like um, and so slab sawing is definitely a good method okay so right now I'm going to blow your mind by showing you uh, some common everyday items uh, in grain direction. I've got three young kids and so one of the things we like to do is play with blocks and I have here a set of the different blocks that our kids like to build things with. Alright, so we can see different grain direction even in things like this and hopefully uh, the more you become familiar with wood and the longer you're looking at this uh, you'll start to sort of pick up these things uh, even just in everyday items. First thing I want to show you is this square block, okay? okay? This is all pine and you can see on this piece here, uh, the grain direction is running very vertical on this block. And so this uh, cheap little play toy block is actually a piece of quarter sawn wood. Fascinating, huh? Now, as far as rift sawing goes, this is going to be a rift sawn piece of wood right here. You can see how the grain is going more or less uh, at a 45 degree angle across, uh, across the block there. And so that's going to be pretty much uh, rift sawn no matter which way you tilt it. Now one thing we always have to consider when you're talking about grain direction is exactly what does that mean? Well, it just has to do with the orientation of the grain, okay? So which way is it going? Well, here is a round piece of wood, okay? And I might call that flat sawn, but then as we rotate the log, well now we are all of a sudden quarter sawn, right? Well this is a piece of round wood, so it might blow your mind a little bit, but if we orientate this way, well all of a sudden we're talking about a rift sawn piece of wood, okay? And so there's lots of different ways that you could turn that and you could say, well, now this is quarter sawn, now this is flat sawn, now this is rift sawn. Uh, so don't get too confused about that. All we're really talking about is which way is the grain going. And you can even say, see in these common everyday uh, play blocks that came from my kids' box um, that you'll see different grain directions and things all the time. It doesn't make them a better wood or a worse wood or anything like that. It's just different uses and different purposes. And you see, for common everyday play, play blocks, it really doesn't matter which way the grain is going. Uh, because something this small and this dimension is not going to change so much that it's going to affect uh, the ability to stack something. Now, if you're building like an instrument or a long tabletop or something like that, or something extra wide where you have to glue many pieces together. Um, if you're doing a floor in your house, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the things, then all of a sudden you have to consider a lot more things that go along with that. 
Um, but you can see uh, everyday common items, uh, how green direction plays out, different uses, different purposes. Again, my name is Michael Beck. I run Southern Indiana Sawmill. I'm a portable sawmill company. I also build and design custom furniture and heirloom furniture uh, for you and your family, utilizing the logs that have been uh, felled on your property uh, for generations to come. So please go ahead and contact me, visit our website, give me a call, and um, we can talk about your sawmilling needs. Thanks. Have a good day.